come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, and welcome to the 600th episode oh of our show. My Yay, we did it! A little round of applause. They said we wouldn't make it. I'm sure they some- they, did. I'm sure they did. I'm sure somebody did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure somebody specifically this made up said, day. Larry Block, they will fold. Fuck you, Larry Block. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's get it all out here. Uh, fuck you, Larry Block. I'm sorry, Ernesto. Uh, who else we got? <laughs> Well, oh. these people talking to you are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. John. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that we already watched, but we, it was chosen by. <laughs> Sean, what did we rewatch for our 600th episode? We rewatched the literal last buddy cop movie of the 1980s. Mm-hmm. This was released in December 20, uh, 22nd of 1989. Wow. wow. So it closed out it the decade. It ended the era. It ended the era. What an era. <laughs> we watched Tango and Cash. Tango and Cash. Uh, the beloved. The bu- Went out on a high Cash. note, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so why did you, uh, so we had done it before. We had why, done it before. Why did you do it again? But that's, uh, a, that's a loose we, because Colin right. is literally the only one here. Yeah. We did it 11 years ago, episode. in June of, of 2013. Um, and uh, by uh, by bylaws that we have put in place mm-hmm. yeah. and voted on and mm-hmm. agreed yeah. upon, all of us, uh, <laughs> we uh, we decided that uh, if it's been more than five years and um, if at, at least, least two people, at least two people, at least two people who are currently yeah. here have not have not reviewed it on the show. It is available to be brought back. And we've been talking. I mean, it's got Stallone. Mm -hmm. It's got Kurt Russell. We've Mm -hmm. been talking. We've been mentioning uh, Tango and Cash here for years. It's Mm -hmm. weird how this movie keeps coming up. Why do you think that is? What do you mean, why do you think that is? It's two (laughs) beloved flavors coming together at once. (laughs) A little Terry Hatcher sprinkled in it. Yeah. Yeah. A little Jack Plants. Come on. (laughs) Here you go. I didn't listen to the past episode, so I don't remember if I recommended it or not. So we'll have to wait (laughs) and see. You want me to tell you how you felt about it? Or should we save that? Uh, who, okay, who was on that episode? On that episode, it was Colin, mm-hmm. it was Travis, mm-hmm. it was Tom, mm-hmm. and it was Brent. Okay. Uh, the original. The, yeah, yeah, the original okay. lineup, That's basically. The original, the original four. Remember we watched it the original on core four. a DVD, <laughs> so that may have also colored the uh, impression. Of the, yeah. I remember it sounded like it was all sped up compared to tonight's. Huh. Uh, ver- oh, yeah, yeah. a lot of memories are coming back. Interesting. But, mm-hmm. um, Tango and Cash. Tango okay, and Cash. so. Um, Do you remember whose pick it was? Ooh, I think it was Brent's. I think it was Brent's. Might have been. It seems like a Brent movie. I think it was a Brent movie. Yeah. That makes sense. Because you questioned him a lot during that. <laughs> yeah. When I, when I, listened to, like, I listened to about the first like half hour of it. And, yeah. Well, there's been so much like uh, love for this movie amongst mm-hmm. the current uh, crop of Saturday Night Indeed. Freak Show superstars. Mm-hmm. And on that, I have a question. Yeah. When's the last time you guys watched this movie? Uh, it's been a while. I've only seen this movie once before, and that was really? like six years ago. <laughs> so okay. within the time you guys have known me, I watched this movie for the first time. My husband showed it to me oh. when we, uh, like when we first um got married. I think right around when we first got married, he's like, "You've never seen it." Right. And I was like, "Michaela, I know it's our honeymoon, it. but yeah, I have something cash, for you, yeah. and it's Tango and Cash." Yeah. I don't well, think there's a but there. I think it was more like, "Yeah, that's our honeymoon." And boy, do I have a present for you. <laughs> and from that first shot of Stallone with the glasses and the suit, I was like, "I'm sold. I don't even need, need to know anything else." But yeah, uptight, sorry, Holly. When was last nerdy, time you saw uh, it? So it's Stallone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last time I saw it. Whew. It's been at least 20 years. At wow. least. Nice. Right? Okay. Because if you guys watched it like 11 years ago. I haven't seen it until before that. Yeah. So it's been a while since mm-hmm. I've seen this. Not I too far before in that. in the theater then in December of 1989. I remember seeing it in the I theater. I did not since I was in preschool. <laughs> right? They don't let three-year-olds watch this movie. They should. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, okay, so this is uh, a Synergy. It's best for putting two of the big... Well, I mean, it seemed like they were doing that back then because you had uh, like Kurt Russell and Mel Gibson, mm-hmm. right? Tequila Sunrise. Mm-hmm. Um, Lethal Weapon really popularized Lethal the buddy Weapon. cop movie in the mm-hmm. 80s. Yep. So it, yeah. it seems like there's... That's you what know, I was going to say. Is the, I mean, is this the quintessential buddy cop movie or is it Lethal Weapon? It's Lethal Weapon. Is it Lethal Weapon? It's yeah. Lethal Weapon. Okay, that's just hands down. No, it's one of those things that like... How dare you in my, question. In my heart, which one is it versus like in society, which one is there it? it is. You know? In my yeah. heart, it's yeah. Lethal Weapon. Oh. Mm-hmm. Even in my oh, heart. Yeah. No, okay. yeah. All right, well, how about bigger question? Best hair. Mel Gibson, Kurt Russell, or Patrick Swayze? Oh, 
I'm going to give it to Kurt Russell. You think so? I think he's got the yeah, best, yeah. I think, I think Swayze's close by him. Yeah. I think yeah. Mel Gibson's is too... Uh, yeah, they had to trim it back for Lethal Weapon too. Yeah. But this yeah. is like, you know, peak Kurt Russell hair because mm-hmm. it's Snake and, Plissken-y. Yeah. Not yeah, like because yeah. he went too far with Escape from L.A. Yeah. I right? think so. Yeah. And you think <laughs> it beats out Patrick Swayze? Yeah. The Roadhouse? Swayze has there, consistency, yeah. at least, I think. His hair is consistently yeah. good. Kurt Russell's a little more like, like Patrick Swayze. Swayze. <laughs> Really? I feel like Patrick Swayze is more fluffy. <laughs> hmm. Did you know that Patrick Swayze was originally supposed to play the Kurt Russell role what? in Tango and Cash? Can you guess what movie he left this movie for? Ghost. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. I was okay. say it's probably Roadhouse. Yeah, yeah. Roadhouse. <laughs> but man, but I didn't. Wasn't Dirty Dancing. Was that this year or the year before? Oh, I fair. don't know. That's a fair question. Yeah, because I feel like Dirty Dancing was right around. Uh, that was you know. 87, was I want to say. Yeah, Yeah, you might be right. And yeah, Ghost was right. 90. Yeah. So Ghost this would have been. Done, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Dirty Dancing was 87. Mm-hmm. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, but I want to see the version with Patrick Swayze too. Like yeah. I, I, I'm not mad he went to do Roadhouse, but I also want to see him in this movie too. Now, okay. Now, th- do you think like the comedy would not come across? I was with just going to say. No, I think it would. I like Patrick Swayze, but. His comedic timing is different than Kurt Russell's. Kurt yeah. Russell so has a more of a comedic charm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Kurt Russell you like has him. like a, uh, there's like this. He has just this natural exuberant charisma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's one of the most 100%. watchable like actors I think ever to grace yeah. the movie screen. Yeah, and he can and so he go works back and forth from like dead serious yeah. to Captain Ron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like <laughs> like he's got that range. Yeah. Um. Oh, and Stallone nice. at this point had just been released from his canon contract yes. after doing yes. Cobra. Yes. <laughs> God bless him. I, know. I was just thinking, I was like, oh, I should be watching Cobra. Because like, I know technically a Christmas movie, but Always it's like be a hot watching Cobra. But, yes, it, the, it, but yeah. it's like, so it's like a hot movie. So like it's a hot, <laughs> yeah, steamy yeah. movie. So it's like, it's a summer movie, yeah, you know, yeah. but you just sweat. Watching yeah. Movies, yeah. Like, yeah. There's lots of neon and shit. Yeah. It's a summer movie. Scissors. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose we didn't ask Sean who directed this movie okay oh, now right. you ask Sorry. Well, my yeah. phone's off because I, I can't exactly uh, we jumped in with so many questions we truly start. did uh, give me two seconds wait it's almost there Andre uh, Andre uh, mm, Konchalovsky yes Andre Konchalovsky who yeah do we know did, Andre Konchalovsky no no, <laughs> no, I don't. Colin may but Colin, Colin is, an, is an obscure well, individual yeah but I, I remember his name uh, being associated with a movie called Runaway Train, yes. oh, yeah, which yeah. was John Voight and uh, mm-hmm. Eric, um, uh, no, yeah. Eric Roberts? Eric Roberts, yeah. thank you. I was going to say, I, was gonna say I know, like, I know that movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I've seen it. It's like, it's a really good movie, but he was a, so, I think he was, a, he was a Russian filmmaker who made a bunch of like dramas, yep. and then I think Runaway Train was his first like American movie. Mm-hmm. It looks pretty interesting. And then from that, it, it, it is pretty good. Okay. And then from that, he went Hollywood with uh, Tango and Cash, and I think he was fired from this movie. He was indeed. He was and fired from this movie? Then he went movie? back to doing dramas. There yeah. was, what? <laughs> there was so much behind the scenes shit that went on with this movie. Really? Between, uh, I mean, Barry Sonnenfeld was the original DP, so uh-huh. Stallone got him fired. I th- Did brought- they fight? Like fisticuffs? No, no fisticuffs. <laughs> Nobody fought. There was just a clash oh. of egos. That is and, weird, too, when you okay. think of like Sonnenfeld's right? uh, cinematography career. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't mm-hmm. look like this movie. Looks. Right. Well, how yeah. early did he get fired? Oh, pretty early. Okay. And I but think Stallone. Still, yeah. but he, oh, Sonnenfeld. Sonnenfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sonnenfeld got fired pretty early, and so okay. Stallone okay. brought in, like, it, Stallone brought in a couple guys. There was He did some rewrites on this movie. That it was okay. originally written as The Setup. The Setup, That was yep. the title. Indeed. And then it was uh, tailored to Stallone, right? Yeah. Yep. And then he ended up tailoring it to Kurt Russell. I like, yep. the, I like the title change. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> title. What do we call this? Well, we have Tango and we have Cash. And- Wasn't there like some thing behind the scenes about Stallone insisting that he play the straight guy this time because he was tired of playing like the muscly dumb guy? I, there was a lot of Stallone wanted this to be a more serious movie. Yeah. And mm-hmm. there, that, he, was, he was at odds with... Um, Uber producer John Peters, uh, who you may remember from, I mean, he produced a lot of stuff for Warner Brothers and everything. Uh, including? Including, well, and he, he most notably known for, I would say, wanting a giant spider in a Superman Oh, movie. that guy. And then subsequently getting it oh. in Wild Wild West, but yes. then also getting a Spider-Man Nick Cage 
in uh, the latest Flash. He wanted yep. the polar bears yep. at the Fortress of Solitude. Yes, and all that yes. Stuff. Yeah. Go back to listen to Kevin man. Smith yeah. give the story about because oh, he produced uh, Batman. He, yes. I think he, Batman. he's on all the Batman movies as executive. Yes. It's like John Peters and was Peter. Barbara Streisand's hairstylist. And then yep, parlay that, that's right. and parlay that into right. producing <laughs> huge Hollywood movies with insane ideas. With ins- yeah. the man is insane is ideas. Insane. Yeah. I feel like I need to learn more about this. Yeah, thing. I, I yeah. Feel, I'm sure there's a very find any podcast story. Kevin Smith is on. He'll tell the same story about working for this guy. It's nuts. Yeah, it's, yeah. there's some pretty nuts stuff about him, but he's produced a I feel lot. Like I've actively avoided Kevin Smith podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, like I don't listen to him, but he'll guest on a podcast and he tells this story every time he guests on a podcast. I guess so. Because it's just the most ridiculous yeah. that Hollywood gets. Where, right. You know, yeah. People so totally out of touch with mm-hmm. the interest of the audience. Mm-hmm. They're just, you know. Um, but yeah, he was the money man. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so I assume then he was the responsible for firing the director. The director was off the movie within like a month or well, something. three like, months. He three shot months. for three months and then he well, got that's fired. that's a significant amount. It right? is. Yeah, um, it is. But they were uh, constantly going over budget. This movie ended up being like $20 million over budget. I think it was like a Ooh. $50 million. Yikes. Being like In 89? $54 holy million shit. is what the budget shit. ended up. Which well, now remember million. that Stallone's last movie. So, holy shit. This is okay. Like, <laughs> so Rambo 3 is 88, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which we did on the show. Yeah, and that Rambo's was a pussy. That was uh, <laughs> the first, uh, yeah, the, the the self-deprecating joke at the beginning Man. of the movie. But that was, I think, the first like movie to cross a hundred million dollar budget, right? Okay. And that was directed by a guy named Peter McDonald. Yep. Who was the second unit director on this one, and also came in and directed a lot of other stuff. Peter McDonald. Peter McDonald. Because <laughs> uh, he had worked with Stallone. But yep. Peter McDonald was like a second unit director on a bunch of action yep. movies. And then I think Rambo 3 might be his only like, you know, sole directorial credit. But so he's one of the guys yep. who assists in, in making this movie. Yep. And then who replaced uh, Andre Konchalovsky? We had uh, Albert Magnoli. Do you know his name? Because I do. It does. Okay, you give it to me because I I have not. This doesn't ring a bell. Purple Rain. Oh, right. He did some oh, print stuff. Right? He did, he did the all movie. the print stuff. Right. I think he was the guy. who. So you're like, what the <laughs> qualifications did he have to come in and, <laughs> right. and, and handle Tango and Cash? This movie is a disaster. Free? Yeah. Right? It's like any, you, if you're just walking by the set, they might hand you a job right? to be in this movie. Basically. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Basically. It's like... um um. Oh, uh, bro, what's his name? Brian James? Yeah, the actor? Yeah, the actor. Yeah. It, like, he gave an interview about his whole process of finding the Cockney accent for his mm-hmm. bad guy in this and all that stuff. And he, he's telling the guy, he's like, by the end of it, I was rewriting shit. Like, that's how, <laughs> that's, that's how this got. Like, this is the process of what happened. Well, there were some people who worked on it and said this was one of the most mishandled movies mm-hmm. he's ever worked on before. And just a you know a bunch of people, there were just problems well Stuart baird who he said was uh the supervising editor as he's labeled in this yeah because he i think cut like lethal weapon and like yeah. a bunch of stuff for warner brothers was brought in after two other credited editors tried to put the movie together yep. and so i heard they started without a finished script i still yes. don't do not understand how that happens but uh, i mean die dates. hard was also like one that like started without a finished script and turned out to be a great movie it all depends on who you got working on there if if you can pull that off it's never a good idea we've got we've got uh budgets we've got sets rented mm-hmm. we gotta go we gotta we got a premiere we'll date to hit. As, yeah we just gotta go and so there 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 it goes yep um okay so I mean, uh, it makes sense to me there's often times that i'll get I'll get like side work and it's like you just say yes and figure it out later. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, on these yeah. budget le- I mean with millions of right. dollars but, on but the these line. People, you don't think people, that happens? Right. That happens all the time. But these people live at that level yeah. where they yeah. can do that. Yeah. yeah. Holly's just got the level of, of, of doing that and so do we, but they have they just live there where they're just yeah. like millions coming in and we'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes at some point they do. you gotta figure out like are you gonna make money on it? I think this yeah. movie was a hit. It made uh, again budget fifty four million, made about hundred and twenty million. All right. Which is considered profitable. Because mm-hmm. yeah. uh, both of yeah. these guys were like at the, because Overboard is right around here, yeah. right? And, uh, oh, yeah. Both are just like highly popular actors mm-hmm. at this point. And I do remember um, that I was initially, when I first saw the movie, um, the fact that so much of it takes place in prison was <laughs> like a shock. Because I guess right. that hadn't been sold to me maybe in the trailers or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And Stallone had just done Lockup. 
And we right. did that on this show, right? I have no memory of that movie. Did I we? Think we did I, we, we, like we were not ago. here. I wasn't here. No, for we that. were not I think here. It was no. Years ago, then. I remember seeing Lock Up. So that's uh, I mean, it's that's Stallone in prison. It's Stallone in prison. Okay. He's got to break out of prison. Okay. So he's. It like, sounds like we, we should have done movie. it on this show. Sounds like another thing to keep him on top of the wall. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, we, we're just yeah. scrambling to find Stallone movies now. We're just like, ah, we're bringing a, Oscar next. <laughs> oh or stop, or my we mom will do, shoot. Oh, or, we could do that. R- rhinestone. We could still do Rhinestone. Rhinestone would yeah. probably be the. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> how did this get made? Just did Rhinestone. Yeah. Rhinestone's fucking, fantastic. Yeah. Is fucking mm-hmm. But yes, Rhinestone. We've, so, we've still got which Stallone also, material. Yeah. Uh, listening to the podcast before 13 or 11 years ago, you guys brought up Rhinestone. It's, it's, it's good. It's a good movie. <laughs> and it's got like Drunkenstein. It. Yeah, it, exactly. Sylvester Stallone mm-hmm. sings. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's classic. Yes. Um, okay. So uh, Tango and Cash is uh, so it was a, a, a movie that had a troubled production mm-hmm. and they just threw money at it. What's it about? Who are Tango and Cash? The most famous cops in LA. <laughs> I love yes. because apparently that's a thing. I, I just love how we just like LA cops. Yeah, and we decided yeah. like They're we need to make that yeah. the coolest job yeah. to have in an action like, movie. In all is to the be news an LAPD. stories. Yeah. Like Los Angeles knows who they oh are. Oh my god, t- take a <laughs> shot every time a news headline comes up in this movie. They t- they tell a third of this movie through news headlines on the yeah. screen. Do you know the name of one cop? I don't. <laughs> no, the, the, but I, in this world, the this cops world, get the yeah, you know the fucking. Page. Avengers. Yeah. Uh, 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 Mark Furman, but it's not a good, a good, not a good, yeah. not good to, he's not, he's not good famous. Yeah. <laughs> Look that one up, folks, if you don't know. Yeah. 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 Um, but an LA cop. LA cop. Um, so uh, these two famous LA cops, but they, uh, so the city is so vast that they have mm. different. East side, what, they got an East Coast, West Coast in LA <laughs> like battle. But yeah. the bad guys kind of have that too, except they don't battle. They're like yeah, you know, one unified front. Right. They're coming mm-hmm. together because Tango and Cash have been a thorn in their side separately at this mm-hmm. point mm-hmm. in their business. So I assume then John Peters is responsible for uh, the casting of Jack Palance in this movie I as the bad so. guy because yeah. he had worked with him on Batman. Which is the same year. Right? I forgot he was in Batman. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. And then, so S- City Slickers was right? the f- yep. following year? The first one? Yeah, first was it was uh, 91, maybe. That was 91? Uh, 90? Then, Let's find out. And that's when he got the Best Supporting Actor Award, right? Oscar, didn't mm-hmm. he? For City Slickers. For 91 is, is City Slickers. Did he win it for the first one or the second one? Well, I think it was the first one. Okay. Because that's why that. everybody yeah. came back for the second one. But gotcha. yeah, Jack Palance, mm-hmm. star of Shane. Well, okay, co-star of Shane. <laughs> star of like- Without Warning. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, was that Mar- Martin Sir Landau? Shed. What was the Shed. one that had... Um, also, all all alone, in the the, yeah, alone in the dark. Alone in the dark. Yeah, this is all Holly's fault. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I know, but he would. Uh, so he went from that, you know, kind of period in the early '80s to this, like at the end of the '80s. He was in all these high-profile mm-hmm. movies, and mm-hmm. then ultimately awarded a Best Supporting Actor statue. I think. Mm-hmm. Right, he best, did best, win. Yeah, he'd won. Best I remember him he coming he out the one on push up on mm-hmm. stage at the Oscars. Which I mean, what what a. Uh, what a uh, just to get up there, win an Oscar, and then just get down and do a one arm push up, like what was it, like seventy six yeah, or something yeah. like that. What he was yeah, doing, yeah, that. right? Yeah. Icon, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he plays the villain uh, who is wealthy, um, yep. and his business is mobs. <laughs> yeah, e- general evil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> 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 Unclear. Let's remember that one. General evil. Yeah. General evil. I love evil. that. Is, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, guns, drugs, and general evil. Yeah. yeah. But he appears to have a partnership with uh, other factions within the, the East, city. The Russians. Yes. Okay. Is that what was going on? Because yeah, James Hong is 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 representing the yeah. East. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, the other guy you looked up, who is Russian, I believe. Okay, he's supposed to be Russian, or yeah, okay. I, I believe he's supposed to be. Russian. I mean, have you have you seen Despicable Me? Yes. How there's just this like league of like villains. Yeah, like it feels like that. Yeah, they kind of they're uh, all just like in this world and they like join together and they go to right. the same bank or whatever. Like that's it's very like, cartoony. It's yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. United Nations of crime. It is. <laughs> I got that. So you say cartoony because yeah. I was like, I'm sitting there watching. Our mission, general <laughs> evil. Yeah. 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 
That's what it seemed like. Yes. So a lot of the criticism of these movies, especially, I mean, like Lethal Weapon tries to be, uh, you know, more serious than this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. But it does have that thing that, um, you know, it's like, because you can see all these influences. There's this, uh, the the quippy one-liner. Mm-hmm. Of course. Uh, the 80s uh, bodybuilding culture, mm-hmm. right? And uh, it all kind of coalesces around this. But this one, like I was sitting there watching it. I'm like, it's like a comic book movie. But that it doesn't seem accurate. It's a cartoon for adults, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that a bad thing? It even sounds like a, like an adult swim cartoon, doesn't it? Yeah. Just a Tango, Tango and Cash, Cash. would be like it a really fifteen does. minute adult Lilo swim cartoon, yeah, or something. That, <laughs> wow. Okay. As a kid, <laughs> Collins is like, what's yeah. another of this? Hambo and, this. and yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. Ricky and okay. the Prometheus and Bob. Making them up. <laughs> uh, Prometheus Ren and Bob. Like yeah. Yeah. Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, I guess it, you know, it's like it plays out like it's written with that kind of mentality in yeah. mind, right? It's like this is not going to be serious at all. No, but it's <laughs> but so fun is the thing that we're going yeah. for. And we're going to put so. charismatic people in it. Yes. And mm-hmm. we're going to carry that along with action, action right from the jump mm-hmm. to the very end. Right. Never stops. Never, Never stops. stops. No, um, I, I feel like I mean, I don't know. their I don't know their general attitudes about this movie, but I feel like Stallone and Kurt Russell. Actually, I feel like everyone is <laughs> really enjoying themselves. It this. feels like it, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure once like they got past Like, they're all hamming the, it up. Yeah. Like they're like, really having fun. They really, I like, um, uh, uh, I think Stallone just kind of always thinks he's a comedian. Like, yes. Uh, I think mm-hmm. he really likes playing that part of it. He does. Because they love the back and forth. They mm-hmm. love the bickering, the one-liners and everything. Because they're really going hard on all of them. All like, of every them. other line is just some zinger to the other guy yeah. or somebody in this. Yeah. Every and, other line. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amazing is good. That doesn't connotate negative or positive. Amazing yeah, is a yeah, good yeah. way there's, to describe it. Yeah. There's so many, like, did you just propose to me jokes? <laughs> oh, my God. So it's like every other moment I was like, okay, now kiss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> or just a, uh, like a good deep hug. Just like, <laughs> Like something. They were very casual having that conversation in the shower. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. That was a, a very good. long scene. I'll bet yeah. they went dicks out. Kind of I, oh, I get it. I'm pretty sure we saw buns, so I'm sure, pretty no, sure they did. You there know? were no socks in no. this scene. No. They went full out. For the actual scene itself. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, but I think just for each other, just like, just as, I think probably. They're as like, a, are you going to wear a sock? No, are you? No. Like, uh, yeah. You, yeah. I bet you fucking wear a sock. I bet they were going at each other about it. It's like, I'm not fucking wearing no, a sock. Sucked. Well, it's probably one of those things, too, where like, you know, because uh, I mean, it turns around too fast are, you something hit They're me. all self-conscious and you got to do like the, the pump ups like yeah. before you go into the into the actual, you know, shot. Because it's all muscles and but, everybody's... Okay, yeah. the question about the scene, the, the, I got lost in the dialogue a little bit because... Same. It didn't make sense. <laughs> it didn't make sense, most of it. Oh, yeah, that's but why. When in, they're, the, when, in the whole movie or just the in scene? The, in the shower well, scene. in the whole movie, yes. <laughs> but yeah. in the shower scene specifically, someone calls someone Pee-wee. And the other one says, yeah, tripod. And it's like, that's not. He's calling them small. And then he's just they, like, you got a big dick. They're, but, yeah. They're literally like, you're tiny. And then like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, hey. but tripod's not the insult you think. No, it's, it's not. Yeah, that's a, very, not, that's yeah. a nice compliment. Yeah. Yeah. And what, they're using those like the entire way the through the rest of the through, movie. Yeah. yeah. It's Every, like he's like, I'm teasing you, but not too much because I love you. <laughs> yeah. Well, the it's two guys... Uh, and they're like an opposites a trick situation, like, yeah. right? Yeah. Because like, that's the whole thing, What are you doing? Thing, right? Breaking up the soap. Calm down. Yeah, because yeah, they get very serious. He's yeah. like, I don't know you that well. <laughs> like, yeah. Seriously, every five seconds, I'm like, now kiss. <laughs> well, I guess the whole idea of the movie is you're going to put these two uh, like opposite cops together, and by the end of it, they're going to have to find a way to work together. Mm-hmm. And to do that, you're going to have to establish that uh, what the... Like they're their well I was gonna say their mode of operandi but you know it's, it's like, like what they're good at and what yeah. they can each accomplish so who is Tango who is this guy like what's Ray his Tango <laughs> Sylvester Stallone he is a nerd yeah <laughs> In, in certain he wears aspects. Armani suits. Yeah, I was like, he is an Armani cop. He, yeah, he yes, is. An, yeah. He is an I think he's called cop, that in yes. the movie. Well, yeah. What is, yeah, I think yeah. Armani something. He calls yeah. him in the yeah. movie. And he but. follows the stock market, and he's yep. all about. He's got. He's got he, his glasses on. He looks on. like a yuppie. And yeah, yeah he's a yuppie cop. A basically, yuppie. yes. It wouldn't be a Stallone movie if he didn't talk about diet culture and eating appropriately. Like mm. this dude does this in every fucking one of his movies. He talks about 
to, to the one guy he's like talking about his diet and the shit he should eat when the spaghetti plate scene. I'm sorry, yeah. you were yeah. eating pizza with scissors. Yeah, yeah it's like, every, <laughs> yeah. you calm down? Yeah, every, every movie you, you on drenched. That stuff. Yeah. No, that was that was what's her name. I was like, you drenched your French fries. Brigitte Nielsen was, was dry. Yeah, see, yeah. now I just really want to watch Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> we will watch Cobra. I know. And then who's uh, Gabriel Cash? Gabe Cash, Kurt Russell, the. More of the live wire, I would say, of this. He is the uh, the just because it's the equivalent. He is the rigs. Yeah, of this. yeah. He's a, he's a you little can crazier. tell because his not shirts suicidal. don't have collars. Well, shirts don't have collars. <laughs> with a nice feathered long yeah. hair. He's not suicidal, but he's a little more crazier than mm-hmm. than Tango is. And he's uh, like, well, so Tango's like Tango's the Beverly Hills cop, right? He's got the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Oh, I thought you meant Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah. I was like, how is he Eddie Murphy? Yeah. <laughs> right. What? Yeah. He's also from, well, he's like black. from the, the, the Beverly Hills area. Yeah. Right. And then, right. uh, uh money up cash there, is, yeah. yeah. Like living in a, probably a trailer somewhere. Mm-hmm. Do we see where he lives? Yeah. Cause yeah. somebody yeah. jumps through the. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually oh, yeah. not, it's a pr- pretty nice apartment. Yeah. 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 Nice Mess- location. It's messy, but it's mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Because he's working. He's never home. Yeah, he's fine. There's a scene at the beginning of this movie that I didn't realize this until I read something about it, but uh, it's uh, Stallone has to stop a uh, semi-truck that's uh, secretly carrying cocaine, Mm -hmm. and I guess that was borrowed from a Jackie Chan movie. Huh. Oh. And so then Jackie Chan borrowed like it, like the... Like it is in a Jackie Chan yeah, movie? Okay. Yeah, or something very similar to it. Okay. And then I guess Jackie Chan borrowed the scene of uh, the guys going down the, the live wire. Oh. Yes. For uh, Super Cop. Nice. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So there was a little... Okay, so I mean, it's basically action from the get-go. We mm-hmm. meet uh, uh, Tango. He's got to stop Robert... Uh, Zadar. Zadar mm-hmm. from... Uh, the, the star, chin. yeah, the star of Maniac Cop, yeah, yep. and, he, samurai, and cop. samurai Cop. Samurai Cop. Does he have like a condition? Yes. What yeah. Is, what is, I think we talked about Samurai Cop, right? He had some we, sort we of probably, a couple but more I, Maniac Cop. We, I think we've yeah. talked about it before. Probably. But I just he don't just have has, a memory yes. of anything ever. But I yeah. don't even remember this one yeah. as, as to specifically okay, why. But it, he but it is big, like a condition or yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, and it gives him this massively pronounced. Yeah, he doesn't look real. Yeah. No, he should be the bad guy in every single movie. And he's I the bad he guy did. in every movie that he's in. I yeah. mean, he is. Like, I mean, that guy can't now. be a good guy. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Robert Zadar is. Yeah. No, no, right. he yeah. could not. Yeah. He can't play a good guy. You I was can't like, just rude. be like, he's a fine man. No, he's a perfectly <laughs> fine He was a perfectly yes. fine man. Yeah. Um, but no, you can't just show up and be like, I'm here for the. Uh, well, he, <laughs> he could play like, um, who's the Mountie? <laughs> like, um, fuck. Brennan Fraser played him. In oh. A, uh, like uh, Dudley Do Right. Dudley Do Right. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, <laughs> like, he's got, he could have that pose and just like, that chin is too perfect. You, you were just going to make him <laughs> but a bad you guy. You can't have this guy be an extra in the background. No. Like, no. He no, can't. no, no, no. He's no, too no, noticeable. That, no, that chin yeah. is is like Jean Claude Van Damme dancing. <laughs> yeah, right. Is what that chin I was is. Just thinking that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the that same what? comparison. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> was like, that's what that is. You can't, he was like, you see that if he was in the back. Well, and he just has like a weird silhouette because he's tall and like broad yeah. too. Yeah, so he's just guy. an imposing looking dude. Yes. Like, yeah, no, he has to play villains because he can't look like anything not villainous. But I also wonder if anybody ever like uh, countercast him as right. something like yeah. softer and just a nice guy. Put him in like a touching yeah. romantic comedy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or like a ballet instructor in some movie or something. Yeah. Yeah. Just something go. really he's off. Just, just like, he's just like a dad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> really well-meaning sweet dad. A kid soccer coach or something. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. He, <laughs> but, then, uh, but if he was, I'd see him and be like, like, why did you get the goal? Why did you get it? And breaking shit over his knee. <laughs> Well, I mentioned him only because he's the, so he's basically, there's, this movie has a, a selection of, of bosses yes. Yes. that they have to fight through, right? We introduced <laughs> yes. to him at the beginning, but he's going to be the prison boss. Yep. And then you've got Brian James from uh, Blade Runner, right? Yep. Only he's running around with a Cockney accent and a ponytail yep. and a switchblade. That's how we know. A straight right? razor, yeah. A straight razor. Yeah. Sorry. That's how we know that that, that villain type, yep. you know. Because you had to, like, I, it, is this the only era in which the ponytail, the bald man with a ponytail, was pro- oh, yeah. was prominent? Yeah, as in I like feel the eighties. Like yeah, yeah. No, in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe early nineties, just because we got the cultural seepage and whatnot. But yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, because he can't do that anymore. I don't think. 
I know there's a lot in this movie I don't think you can do anymore. I, I, I mean, would agree. You should have never done it. <laughs> <laughs> there's that, yes. Is Same. part of the there's appeal that. of this movie that it is uh, wacky crazy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is most of its appeal, yeah. I think. Yeah, Absolutely. Keeps it going. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's not like a straight action movie. It's uh, it's like just goofy and extreme. Yeah. There's a yeah. scene where Stallone goes to the, what was it? The, the, the Michael J. Pollard scene. What Stallone that? goes there, or Kurt Russell goes? Or Kurt Russell goes there, there. Yeah. and yeah. it's like it's like the LAPD R and D department. And Michael J. Pollard's like Q. Yeah, he's Q. yeah, and yeah. he has a whole lineup of random gadgets. He's got for things him. that are blowing up. Yeah. He's got because apparently a stuff- LAPD has like an experimental weapons <laughs> unit. <Yeah. laughs> That's like, where all your tax dollars are going. Yeah, where they're just building shit like a, a stuffed dog who's good for home defense. Who's just yeah, for like senior a- citizens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, this is a completely separate movie. Yeah. It feels like that's True, happening yeah. parallel to That's this. what it feels like. Yeah. Was yeah. that like a reshoot or they just added it in? It's like, here's something that we're going to... But I mean, it looks you know expensive. It's loaded mm-hmm. up with a bunch of uh, uh, well, I mean, stuff. It makes sense if what you say is true and there's like a million people rewriting this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Just as they go and like, yeah. we'll just have a Q character in the LAPD basement. Mm-hmm. Sure, why not? Because they got to stop why there. Why not? Uh, both of our uh, heroes, uh, because they're a thorn in the side of uh, general evil... <laughs> and Jack Plants. Yeah. Is, Jack, is Jack Plants his name General Evil? Like, he is General, yeah, he's General, General Evil. General Evil. <laughs> what was his uh, his character's name? Was uh, some French Ives? Nope. Well, well that was his first name. Ives, Ives started with his P. first name is Ives. Y V E S Ives. <laughs> Mister Ives Pendergrast. That's not per, right. Per, per, parrot. 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 There you go. Parrot. Parrot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Sure. I which, nailed I it. A, which I think is a lethal weapon bad guy at a certain point, but whatever. There was also another lethal weapon call out in this. Was there? It was uh, what'd you say? Twenty William Twelve. Oh yeah, uh, one of the call, <laughs> the call names. For, this is me and Colin arguing in the middle of watching this movie about cop. LAPD cop call signs because theirs was 20 William 12 and Colin's like that's from Lethal Weapon I'm like bullshit it is because it's 3 William 56 but we looked it up and they're both right just in different Lethal Weapon movies Lethal Weapon <laughs> too. Yeah. nerds nerds yeah. I love LA cop movies um, Jack Polance uh, has to I, I love these exposition scenes where he's like that's all he's got cash Tango. Tango. Uh, and demonstrates and this to his like, lackeys. And we need to talk about how he demonstrates it. <laughs> yes. With, with his mic. rat box. With his rat box. <laughs> Where were they before they were brought in for this demonstration? Just in the, just in the box. I think they just keep them in the box. <laughs> <laughs> how cruel. I know. It's an ornate box yeah. with a lock on the lid. Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah, yeah because it, you it want to be like kept a in a cage. Leather trunk. Yeah. 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 You want to be kept in a cage. And someone's like, well, it's an ornate cage. <laughs> right. It's yeah. pretty. There were, there, oh, thank God. There were holes in it, though. Yeah. Were there? Yeah. yeah. In yeah. the back. That's so yeah. his, his thing is, <laughs> these two cops have cost me so many millions in dollars yes. because they keep busting all my and drug And I have to good. show you this by... Yes. Performing with my rat babies. So what is his plan that he performs? So we get the idea. Well, it's mentioned over and over again that he's a games addict or something. But they need to have like somewhere where he's got the chess board or he's right. got like you know a storeroom of every time games and him, shit. Right. The but rat just, labyrinth didn't do it for you. There's right. just one like, it was yeah. a random Henshin weird. Beats him at checkers and he shoots him. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Like, right. Something like that. Yeah. He the, doesn't like to lose. No. The the rat maze doesn't make any sense because it doesn't finish the point at all well, like I agree. The, yeah. the, we don't see the rats go completely through the maze no, and then like something happens nothing happens cage. yeah because he's talking about putting tango and cash in prison yeah and then killing them he should put the rats in a cage yeah. not in a maze yeah. it's in a maze okay so i mean to be fair when they break out of prison they're kind of going through a maze well, that's very true it ends up being that way yeah. but so if you're gonna say foreshadowing for the movie but, but it doesn't make sense for the character right. but if you're gonna say the metaphor is where it's going through a maze you better fucking show me where it's going through a maze and you can't just dump them in there and then be like get it and then cut away yeah. like okay but then they'd have to like train rats to go through a maze oh, yeah, yeah. these I rats know, were but... not <laughs> they were just doing much. they were just there for snuggles they were they were just like cuddle me that's he all just I kept and he did him. he kept shoving him like, in his face <laughs> yeah yeah whenever he was stressed he would open that rat box and take him out and just like like i want him giving an entire 
<laughs> Dude is definitely on the spectrum. Yeah. I want him to give an entire like, little monologue dump where he's just rubbing it on his face. <laughs> Not you don't doesn't nobody mentions it. He's just ah, yeah. somebody get tangled. But his like cash. his like villain layer is like one of those yeah. super modern like eighties villain yeah. like yeah. corporate offices where it's like big marble sculptures and right. everything's of black. Monitors, but they're yeah. all yeah. tube TVs. Yep. So there's that yeah. big and black. your weird neon yeah. sculpture yes. and the flickering yeah. neon in the corner. Mm-hmm. Big bar, yeah. I love but, it. <laughs> so, I mean, you always hear stories about, like, you know, actors who, they're like scenery actors. Yeah. Donald mm-hmm. Pleasance mm-hmm. always comes up as one of the, oh, like, sure. you know. Oh, sure. We uh, had to the, mention him. We got, yeah, let's, bring up, uh, <laughs> let's bring up, what's his name as well? Um, the, the third in the triumvirate of Jack Palance, uh, Donald Pleasance, and... Uh, Landau, Martin Landau. Yeah. Yeah, Martin Landau yeah. always like if you'd showed up in this a, movie, Holly. Yeah, <laughs> but they always act with some kind of prop or so prop actors. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, did you read how we got rats in this movie? I did oh. not. Oh, oh, please, please do tell us. Yes. Apparently, Jack Polance They're went his rats? to a petting zoo <laughs> and he became, <laughs> inter- you know, because he had been offered the movie, I think, and then was like. Uh, I could use, you know, the, the wait, rats. Wait, was, be, like, was he just hanging out at a petting zoo? Like he just goes there on that's Sundays, what you do or did like, he go oh, there you're specifically? Visiting wherever? Yeah, he was walking out with the goats, but then he saw the rats. He's like, "That's better." So, according to movie legend, he shows up on set. <laughs> no, you can't tell anybody because somebody's going to shoot it down. You just and <laughs> he had the desk made. Uh, with his own money oh so he shows God. up because this is what he's doing with no. his character right and nope. so that's also he shows up and he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna put him in the yeah so this is his oh edition and he brought the table and the mice and they're like okay he's like <laughs> what do you do say no <laughs> right you're like oh, okay no. i guess this is a character trait now yeah yeah, yeah. and so Holy there you go shit. he took over his part of the movie wow. and you remember it so yeah, it worked. So, okay, I guess he was right. He was right. It but was a good choice. Yeah. Wow. Just I, I I got so hung up on just Jack Polance went to a petting zoo. I couldn't get past that. <laughs> that too. Yeah. I'm like, wait, wait. wait that's wait, so that's a title card that gets you to watch a show. Like, was, like Jack Polance goes to a petting yeah. zoo. Yeah. Like, like was he was he there when he got the call that he got the part? Like, did he go there oh. specifically for inspiration? <laughs> like, uh, right. What was he doing at the petting? Well, doesn't I like sound that like one. he was there and he got the. He's like. Yeah. At the yeah. rat cage yeah. when he gets the He's call. Like, you're, right. you're coming with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will be great. He's like, it. I see you have two rats. I'm going to name them Tango and Cash, and they're mine <laughs> now. This is like a Kirby Look enthusiasm for later this bit. Year. <laughs> Theaters everywhere. Uh, it would happen to Larry this David. Yeah. <laughs> so his plan is to get them uh, fraudulently charged, taken out of the way, and put in prison while a big giant drug deal goes down, which I don't think we ever actually see this take place. It's like he's also dealing in. Uh, arms and stuff like that. Yeah, he's doing all that stuff. I'm more uh, concerned with, like, yeah. there's a lot of focus on this. The drug deal was just to set them up. Right, but yeah. he's having, I think it's an arms deal. The biggest one that we've ever had. Right, you and know? they just yeah, don't yeah. need to show it. <laughs> no, yeah. but we need to do We do need to show every piece of the courtroom drama. Or the, 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 it's, it's sort of an <laughs> elongated montage of them going through court and everything that's happening. This is where we get a lot of our newspaper headlines. Yes. Yeah. Through this, this is yeah. bullshit. <laughs> about, yeah. yeah, about everything that's this happening. This fucking how, we, yeah. how, how are they set up? I well, See, this is why This is why I have a, I, I think I have a problem uh, with this uh, elongated montage of all this court stuff because mm-hmm. I don't see how they could be... There's a lot of stuff that's that evidence that goes against them and, and whatnot. I don't know. There's just there's something about this whole thing where it just, just doesn't feel like they should have been convicted. Because this is a cartoon. Uh, yeah. In a cartoon, yeah. this yeah. can happen. I guess, yeah, this is a cartoon. <laughs> yeah. yes. What are you they, talking about? They they walk in, the the police catch them red-handed. There's a dead body. Yep. His gun is there. Yep. There's have, a recording they, they of them talking. And... What are you talking about? Right, the two, Close clean, case. The two cleanest and, and, and best cops in L.A. just suddenly decide to murder a guy. And But, I mean, I guess you'd be like, this is what they've been doing all along. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Murdering people. Because everything's corrupt. And, yep. you know, so that's all you got to say. Corruption. Yeah, because maybe the corruption goes that's up it. to the judge that's even. You know? yeah. How high does the corruption right. go? It always goes know? to the top. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> as long as the newspaper says corruption and shows a picture of them, that's all you got to do. Yep. Done, that's what done sticks deal. in people's mind. Done deal. And we should know this in this day and age. Yeah. And then they have all these expert witnesses testifying against them. So they have to take a plea deal to manslaughter, even though they didn't do anything. Yeah, and no contest. We plead no contest, but we'll take a, you know, mm-hmm. a sentence of some sort. And they're going to get sentenced to a country club prison, but mm-hmm. no... They end up getting dropped off at a maximum security prison. Mm. I like that Jeffrey uh, Lewis 
is uh, he's Tango's boss, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah. where did the bus go? You know, like they don't even know yeah. where everything yeah. went because uh, the fix is in. Yep. <laughs> and so they end up in a maximum security penitentiary. With where... everyone they've ever put away. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Including Robert Zadar. Yep. Yeah. Now, like, wow, he guys, must have just gotten here. <laughs> how did you guys feel about uh, their in- intro to the prison? The fact that everything was on fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything's on fire. You know, yeah, there's a you cell know on those fire. prison fires. <laughs> People, like, inmates are just dropping lit things onto them yeah. as a welcoming party. Yep. It's, be, you know, it's going to be hell. It'd be great if there was no aggression in this. This is just tradition. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what they do. So, hey, welcome, guys. And they're just throwing lit shit at them. Like, things are fucking on fire as they walk by like them. The- Cells are on fire. Yeah. <laughs> There's no law. It's a, a total anarchy. And, welcome. And, yeah. Just throwing shit out there. <laughs> they're, they're basically barrel fires. Like, there's yeah. right. everything yeah. is yeah. on fire. Yeah. It, yeah, it is like... Like, every 10 feet, there's a fire. <laughs> it's like how in a po- future apocalypse movies, yeah, you know it's the future apocalypse because there's a trash can there's on fire. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's like, like yeah, that, it's but like in that, a but in a prison. Yeah, yeah. Yep. prison fires. Prison trash and fires. Yeah, prison was, like, was bad. Pr- yeah. Prison was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one of those, like, Shawshank... This is, yeah. right. this is the, this pre- this is the yeah. prequel to Backdraft. This is why Kurt Russell becomes a firefighter. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, Fuck that. I'm not being yeah. a cop anymore. He didn't get a haircut. It got burned off. And he's like, I must take my vengeance against fire. It took my hair. <laughs> did the fire look at you? <laughs> yeah, it didn't look at It looked at my hair. And it took it. <laughs> and uh, Clint Howard is a cellmate. Yeah. Again, oh, in this yeah, Connected slinky. Universe, Ron Howard, yep. Backdraft. Yeah. It's all there. It's all there. Yeah, his uh, cellmate's Slinky. Slinky. Slinky, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, just jamming on a Slinky like it's an accordion. <laughs> right. But the yeah. bad guys have got the system rigged, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Because now that they've gone in, it's like, but Mr. Perrette, how can you be sure that when they get out, they won't travel us, travel us again? Mm-hmm. What makes you think, they'll get out? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a really good question. Yeah. You gotta, you're, you're doing it better than me. You gotta low and breathy. I wish yeah. our listeners could have seen your face, because yeah. you got it. Yeah. You got the whole thing. I was, I was studying him. So I'm like, I gotta nail this for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. you nailed it. I just gotta cue you for Jack Palance lines. Because point. it's easy to slip between Clint Eastwood and Jack yes, Palance, but yeah. you nailed yeah, it. It is a fine line, yeah. There's, there's you more, nailed an, it. There's more annoyance in Clint Eastwood. He's more annoyed with everything. Jack Palance is just... A little yeah. more eccentric, yeah. Little, uh, yeah. And then yeah. those yeah. those outbursts, also yeah. Yeah. excitement, you know, and yeah, energy. He, oh yeah, because all yeah. he's doing, all this dude is doing, is sitting in his lair for most of this movie. Yeah, or in the shadows. Yeah, because he, he does. He is in the shadows. He does. Yeah. He is in the shadows. Surrounded I by guess, steam um, in the yeah. laundry room. He was. Uh, I guess he said that the reason that he accepted the part was in the script. There were three the scenes part. that he had with Sylvester Stallone. So he's like, I get to do a movie with. With Stallone, mm-hmm. yeah, and in the end, he's not in any scenes with Stallone. Now, there is. Aww, it looks sad. like at the end, were was he there during the climactic shootout? <laughs> this is a good question. <laughs> and did his contract say bring your own rats? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> My God, he's just like we're I know artist. what kind of movie this is. I'm right. gonna make it fun for myself. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'll bring the rats. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. No, I'll. I'll props. <laughs> he's going to talk to the props department. He's like, I got it. <laughs> Wait, do it as Jack but, Lance. But, uh, I can't get over this story. Do we need rats. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But so. he really is he because like you could have they could have shot him. I'm wondering if they ever just share like a frame him and Stallone. Yeah, because I don't know if they do in the prison. He's in shadow. Yeah, and, you know it seems he's got to like, be there. They like he, they. I figured he's got to be there for that scene. And then so they're not particularly acting together, but yeah. Well, that's what he said. Apparently, on a, on a uh, maybe end. he was supposed to be, but they wouldn't let him bring his rats. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he brought them with that would have been funny. Show if or whatever got them in silhouette, it's yeah. Like, ah. um, <laughs> He's got like a carrier <laughs> just Sorry. around his neck, little cage. <laughs> Holly well, really loves the rats. I can't get over this. <laughs> Sorry, like he, there should have been a kiss. There should have been a kiss. He was just mm. yeah. I don't he did, think he did kiss them. Did he kiss them? Yeah. He had them up to his face. He definitely them. kissed them. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the best Jack Blance you've ever done. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he definitely kissed those rats. Um, so our heroes are tortured in prison. <laughs> Uh, they're electrocuted. Yeah, this is seems like with a cute cat. Just rah. this seems like an elaborate setup for <laughs> prison torture. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. right? Because there's a lot going on here. I thought it was going to be like a showdown fight. I guess there was some of that, right? Where mm-hmm. all the prisoners are let out of their cells right. so they can all go come down to the boiler room. Yep. And then we end up stringing up our heroes and dangling them over but there's vats like, of water. This is mm-hmm. complicated. There's like layers yes. of chains and all mm-hmm. sorts of... How right. did they set this whole thing up in the prison? Everyone's the, paid off. 
I get uh, the cor- the corruption, right? That's yeah. the answer to everything. Corruption. Go to the top. Yep. I know because Jack Plants and Brian James are able to get into this yeah. and then escape through clouds of steam mm-hmm. whenever the prison guards show mm-hmm. up. Yep. Lots of steam. Wow. Lots of steam. You yeah. just disappear Lots into it. Yep. And then steam is really dangerous. I don't mm-hmm. think. Yeah, I know. You're yeah. supposed to be in the backdraft yeah, episode. Yeah. Burn the hell out of it, but. Yeah. Yeah. It looks cool on camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, they then escape. This is, becomes a prison escape movie. Very complex. Uh, yes. And Robert Zadar is on their ass. Along with. <laughs> Until he isn't. Because this is where we fight the final boss, right? Yep. There's an elaborate escape through the air vents. And it's pouring rain. And eventually there's a rooftop fight mm-hmm. as they plan to, you know, wire. Jump onto <laughs> electric wires and then use their belts to slide out of. The In the pouring is torrential rain. rain. Yeah. Yeah, like- they need to do some work on their uh, wiring. I've never seen it rain and then just power lines just spark like I know. This. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> the power stay on. Different. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like, this whole uh, prison is janky. Oh, yeah. I mean, but this is 1989, so who knows when that fucking place was built but i liked that it's actual stuntmen doing the stuff i mean right. again, you know you see yeah. that and you're like oh that's actual dudes pulling off this mm-hmm. you know yeah i wonder how many work, of them in the know? wide shot actually grabbed the wire that they were jumping for and, and how many did yeah. not how and many went missed to it the bag you're below. gonna do it again yeah yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, all that, it's so much rain. Mm. I know. God, this sounds miserable to shoot. Miserable. This So much of this movie is in water like it's this. Water. It's crazy. Ooh. I couldn't believe how long some of the, like that scene, even on the rooftop in the rain where Stallone's getting dragged around on the, like the, the, well, the six the inches. Hook? Yeah. yeah. But in six inches of water on a gravel roof, it's yeah. like, Jesus, this is brutal. Yep. <laughs> Filming this seems awful. Yeah. Well, they defeat. Robert Zadar. He mm-hmm. gets uh, electrocuted. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Somebody gets electrocuted. There's so much uh, focus on electricity. Mm-hmm. And right. so now out in the uh, free world, our heroes have to prove their innocence. And that means they're going to have to visit all the people who testified against them, who now, right, their lives are in jeopardy because uh, Tango and Cash are back out and could right. expose mm-hmm. the whole thing. Yeah. So right. there's car bombs going off and... Yep. There's car bombs. There's- oh, but we should talk about their, their meetup plan is uh stallone's sister mm-hmm. we need yes. to talk about oh yeah slash kiki yeah. slash terry hatcher so terry hatcher's in this movie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. is terry hatcher's career uh just i'm trying for to think just for housewife well lois and clark mm-hmm. no 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 i mean in the movie oh, oh. she's a uh, not that exotic I dancer she's no she's no not. She, Perform- no exotic what is this performance, performance? No, no 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 okay because this it's not <laughs> no, a strip club she, if she was an exotic dancer and got nude i had the the real and their spectacular line ready to go yeah uh, never yeah. came up yeah no. but never came up she's a drummer it's that's this, what she is it's this she's really not though <laughs> but it's like this really long runway stage yes and the act before her involves a motorcycle. Yeah. And El- yeah, like and Elvis. They, yeah, yeah. yeah, they drove the motorcycle off the stage. Yep. Yep. She comes out, takes like a jacket off, and then does some just, weird dancing. Yeah. And yeah. then yeah. just bangs on like these electronic drums. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nonsensically, of, yeah. out of tune with the music. Yep. And that's it. That's her act. Yeah. That's it. Uh, she's a showgirl. Okay. okay. All okay. right. In a, in a new era. Doesn't of- seem. <laughs> 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 it was not actually. Like I think you need to be like on beat with the music to do yeah. that. But yeah. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. I've seen showgirls. That's a lot more work than. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Requires a little talent. She's yeah. working her way up. Yeah. And I thought she was supposed to be out of town because isn't there a whole thing about She's like overprotective for brother yeah. doesn't yeah. want her to go on the yeah. plane. Over- blah, yeah. Okay. Their relationship. Goes nowhere. <laughs> their relationship is strange codependent unhealthy maybe because holly because this is the thing it feels weirdly sexual between them yeah they may have played it up because you're i think you're supposed to think that they're dating yeah but that doesn't, doesn't make it right no. make it feel good that's not a good solution <laughs> no, here i don't need not. you know this is yeah. no in what scenes i don't know Did in the I miss office that? scene where we first oh uh, yeah where he's you know he's, he's being real phone. possessive of his sister yeah. he's very protective yeah. of his sister it's, yeah it's odd yeah like I said, it's been at least 20 years since I saw this movie, so I genuinely didn't remember right. what mm-hmm. her character role was. Then I don't know how old she's supposed to be. Young. She seems a 22. lot younger than them, though. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was like, is that his girlfriend? Because it felt really off. Yeah. Because I was like, I feel like it's his sister, but it seems like girlfriend. <laughs> See, we're, we're, yeah, but also, like, uh, Sylvester Stallone doesn't seem sexual in this movie. True. At all, mm-hmm. he's he's very asexual. He's mm-hmm. like he upon no, himself. No, he seems pretty gay for Kurt Russell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know you're right. You're right. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> that's his only love. He just got to realize it throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's like 
I I don't know if this is true. I, heard, I, I don't know if this is true. <laughs> what, if, I, what if we said on the show that is 100% <laughs> true and not just said it anyway? Go I, for it. I have heard that it is a old timey writing trick that if you want two characters of the same sex to have a relationship, but you can't because you can't include that, you have you bring in a relative to mm-hmm. fill that void. Mm-hmm. So it's like they're having sex, but they're not because uh, it's his sister. Mm-hmm. And so you could take that read into this movie, I think, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. Kurt okay. Russell is dating his younger sister. Okay, so in an yeah. alternate world... Because that's as close Stallone, as he can get and still Sylvester be straight. Stallone is slipping Kurt Russell's disc back into his back. And <laughs> yep. like, glad I could do that for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that would gotcha. be the 20 and yep. 20. That's the remake yep. of Tango yep. Cash. When they remake the it. the sequel, yeah. they're all still alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but Kurt Russell does have a thing. He wants to bump uglies with uh, 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 Stallone's Gee. sister. Mm-hmm. So that sets up like a whole dynamic that pays off in the second half of the movie Just because she's going to be... for them to bicker about. Yeah. yeah. And but like lovingly picker. Because it's course. like, I thought you were having sex with my sister. No, she was just giving me a back massage. It's like the sitcom setup. Him, like, why do you want to know so much detail yeah. about this? It's like, what were you doing with my sister? It's like, well, it, uh, one of two things, but, dude. But yeah. also, like, he's never actually mad. Like, they're like <laughs> playful. They're like playfully fighting. Like, <laughs> you fucked my sister. And he's like, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's always going up to his sister and he's like, Describe to me in detail what he was doing. Right. He's a <laughs> very strange dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I've seen him. Make it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, this is a love story. Well, yeah. and then this that, is a love story. It adds her to minutes, the yeah. plot, but that means she's basically going to be the damsel in distress, right? They're, the bad guys are going to kidnap her, and then uh, she's going to have to be rescued. In the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of an afterthought, it feels like. Yeah, it does. How we get to it later on. We don't even. She just kind of mm-hmm. shows up Because later. they know. They know that she, they saw her dance, not, and they were like, "We got to cut her roll down." <laughs> do, she's do, not. She's not the draw. Do you think Tango and Cash. <laughs> in one of these versions of this movie, she had more of a role, and they were like, "Guys, this it is feels really like not it. working. We got to get <laughs> her out of here." It yeah. feels yeah. like, yeah. I mean, it feels like there's there's something like plot threads that aren't connecting mm-hmm. or something. Right. We don't like how the bad guys know about her. I mean, I guess you know it's like we got to have something oh, in the yeah. third but, act. The, to, the plot of this movie is It's like, just okay, then they kidnap yeah. his sister, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then there was a whole thing of, wasn't she supposed to be getting on a plane and be out of the movie? You right. Know? Or they yeah. liked her, and they, John Peters is like, keep that girl in the movie, <laughs> and we'll write like this whole thing. And then they bring in the Purple Rain guy to choreograph this. <laughs> like, Shoot that, yeah, this whole thing in the middle of the movie. Good That's God, her big yeah. scene. Yep. And it's just, wow. I, Although, yeah. It's so under, it's, it feels like we should really be appreciating this scene, but there's not much to to it. It's just. I like the music. No. Yeah. yeah. It was uh, yeah. Yaz. Mm-hmm. Yes. Don't go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So you can look it up. Mm-hmm. Harold Faltermeyer. Faltermeyer did the music. He uh, did for this, indeed. So sounds a little. Yeah. Beverly Hills Cop. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, but I like. I think he sues anybody who uses that synth key. Yeah. Like, he's just like that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> like only I use that. It's like him, and then Harry Manfredini does the same thing for his music. It's like, this uh, is what I do. He did have different themes for Tango and for Cash. Which yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, so the uh, the bad guys are holed up in... I feel like a- there was a third theme for his hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Climax is going to take place in Big Quarry, because that's where oh. Bad Guy yeah. Lair is, right? Yeah. Right, where they have that like space truck thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Yeah, that... <laughs> what, what is there a story behind this? Why is this in this movie? Yeah, why do they have a, why do they have a Batmobile? It is it is uh, uh I'm looking end, at you. It is the end of the eighties. <laughs> it is is just we need excess big explosions, we need big mm-hmm. guns, we need to we need the biggest thing to take out this guy and we can't afford a tank. It does feel like this is just like we don't have an actual ending like plot, plotted out, but we want action. Right. Mm-hmm. And that, so that is it. There's gonna be explosions. Yep. It's going to be explosions, gunfire, dudes are going to die, it's going to be fire, we're going to do jumps, we're going to have things blow up, like that. that is, that's it. Because it's and cool. And you can do all of it in the court. That is the thinking of this scene. <laughs> yeah. Because it's cool. What and would make it even more cool? A story to go with it. Another, I don't know. A fucking monster truck. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's all like vehicles. it's the roided out like because uh, it comes out of nowhere. You're like, mm-hmm. what in the hell? So Q, yeah, right? Like, what is this monster truck waiting for? As it as it it's like the big uh, dog that guards the the junkyard. It's just driving back and forth <laughs> in the day, right. waiting for something to come along. It has a Gatling gun mounted to the side of it. Did know. you notice that out? I think where the uh, the front headlight was because mm. I was watching this truck as it's like you know terrassing through this quarry later on and the, there the are van you're talking about or yeah okay i'm oh, sorry well what are they called the rv the rv yes wait did they ever actually use the gatling gun it's going yeah. as they're running around yeah but see Was that yeah. you don't they're just driving it. every time we yeah. see them they're just driving it yeah. but and i think at one point stone had an uzi in his hand because at this yep. point in the movie machine guns is all you can use yeah um yep. but when you see the truck driving there's fire coming out of the front of it, like machine gun fire coming out of the front. Yeah. There's machine gun fire coming out of the Gatling gun. Oh, there's there? machine okay. gun fire coming out. There's like at least three or four people inside okay. that vehicle shooting out of every side of it as they're being yeah. rockets are being launched off yeah. of other they like pickup trucks. Bad, bad guys. <laughs> they're blowing them their own people up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Like that first wave of guys that come around and then from the other direction, just tons of missiles mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of bad guys just get blown up. Mm-hmm. There are tons of missiles. There's, there's a lot of missiles. In a quarry. A fire, a lot it, of explosions. No real purpose to any of it. It's just the there problem. for spectacle. Who are these people? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's something else. I mean, it's awesome I mean, because you just you have expect, walls of fire going up. What do you expect up? from a guy who puts a rat labyrinth in his bar? Right. I mean, he's yeah, prepared. he's, he's going he's right. gonna to go over the top. That's what he does. <laughs> Did they ever make a video game adaptation out of this? I don't think no. so. But this feels like it this should have been like a video good. game level. You just mm-hmm. drive around and... The oh, I'm sure it was in some game. Firing missiles at you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's and No, this turned into Twisted Metal. Yeah. <laughs> Twisted Metal. <laughs> yeah. That's what this is. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Somebody saw this and like, fuck yeah, we can do that in a video game. Because really, right, when you think about like the script for it, they just have to <laughs> get from... <laughs> script. Who's script? Script. Which really, one? They were what like, part? we got to find the bad guy, right? Uh-huh. They've tracked, I think, this Brian is their James. Maze. This, these and, are the rats in the maze? Well, they just had to get the into cheese. the complex. This whole thing with like, we got to have a, the truck and we got to go through all this is like a whole thing that you could just invent and stick into the movie. Yes. And to, like, bolster it up. Yep. So eventually they get into the complex. They do. They drive through a wall. Well, well, all right. First, there's a lot of, the you know, they <laughs> they drive through the front gate. I mean, they're jumping things as they get blown up. They eventually uh, uh, smash the van uh, be- uh, to Owen's displeasure. Owen is the cue of the movie. Michael J. Pollard. Uh, they get into a, a bigger wrecking machines. I don't know what these are specifically these used are. for. No. They're like they have, they're not bulldozers, but no. they're big. No. Yeah, it's like they pull some shit. heavy metal. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, so big, big machines. They crush the van, and then they drive those through either part of the uh, warehouse. Yep, and yeah. then jump out and go for it with their machine guns. So they got to take down. So now this is like uh, the final. No, there's like two. The James, James Hong, Hong and, and the, the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. are like the minor James bosses. Hong deserved better. I know he did. Mm-hmm. He truly yeah. did. Yeah. Because he, he was did. in uh, Big Trouble in Little China yeah. with Kurt Russell, yeah. what, three years prior to this. Yeah. And the other guy Great. was in Total Recall. He was a general, I think, on yeah. Mars. Um, and they get taken out very easily. Like very as soon easily. as they walk in, James in Bond's gone. Hail of machine gun yeah. fire. Because that's also about the gun hardware in this movie yeah. keeps getting exponentially bigger. Yep. Kurt Russell has a laser sight, yeah. which is bigger than the gun itself that he's right. using. Wait, it's reminiscent of uh, Friday the 13th Part 6, where yep. the red dot goes, you bang. It's mm-hmm. huge, but it's, it's cool. <laughs> yep. And then they have, like, there's these a, machine guns. There's a joke gun. in there somewhere. It's huge, but it's cool. <laughs> Don't they Write have, that like, one down. And they got shotguns? Whatever. They got, like, these no, big, they, gigantic they got, rifles at the end. Yeah, they're, they're machine guns. Yeah. But it's like there's more built onto it that doesn't matter. Yeah. It <laughs> like, looks cool, though. Uh, sure. You didn't? It looked cool. Looks cool. I mean, I mean, Yes. I would love to use it in a video game. Yeah. And so then, uh, see, that's why they don't do, like, do they do movie shootouts on that kind of scale anymore? Or is that, so. like, done? It's like, you no, know, kids might actually go out and buy guns, so we don't well, want to do guns I in mean, movies anymore. About that, this is also one of the movies where it's got the the um, the good action foley, reloading a gun, mm-hmm. just all those sounds yeah. of, all, of weaponry and yeah. technology coming together. It's got all those good foley sounds. Yeah. 
which, which we rarely get, which you know. we don't get anymore, as we've talked about. You I don't love wanna... that sound of putting in a new clip. Oh, it's so it's good! Like good just sound. even though where, where Kurt Russell's like clip and he tosses it to him and the catch. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it sounds so good. It's a great sound. <laughs> it sounds just <laughs> yeah. gone. I love it. So this leaves us with only uh, the main bad guy, Jack Palance. Uh, well, this well, first I would say the main bad guy is is Brian James. Oh yeah, shit! I forgot him. He's got a straight razor to Terry Hatcher's yep. throat. Um, and then there's a and then there's a fight between him and Kurt Russell, and then Sylvester Stallone just gets a dude. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, just a right? long haired dude. Yeah, but he's a karate dude. Yeah, he is a karate. <laughs> he's a karate dude. Karate yeah. dude yeah. yeah, yeah. So you got to fight karate dude he and kicks brain a dude. lot of glass. He does. It's the equivalent of Karate Kid, where the one dude's punching through the 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 car windows as he's trying to punch Miyagi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is basically that. Yeah. <laughs> but but shelves. usually but shelves. <laughs> you pair off like the villain, right, with like the hero that he's got the most uh, grudge against yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it seemed like Stallone had more of like ponytail, ponytail, ponytail. Yeah. But he doesn't fight ponytail. Kurt no. Russell fights ponytail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's weird. And then we uh, deliver on the uh, the gag from earlier in the movie where we put a grenade in his pants. Mm-hmm. Yep, and but that pays off, and he blows up. He gone, and so then that just leaves Jack Palance, the kingpin, yeah, General Evil himself. Yep, General Evil. He <laughs> is somehow also holding Terry Hatcher right. <laughs> uh, prisoner. Yeah, it, in a in a uh, uh, a sliding door opens up, and there's yeah, just many. Uh, why are there? Why are there? Why is this room? Like what is this room? What is this room? The guy's a games master. He loves games. But not that's not a game. Enough. He he keeps her in this chamber that is like a hall of mirrors. Yeah. Yeah. What? It's cool. But behind it, <laughs> where they have to shoot through glass. Yeah, I, I didn't understand <laughs> how to, that works. And they have to figure out a problem that we don't know exists. Yeah. yeah. And they figure it out. Yeah. yeah. But we don't get the chance to like see. Right. Like, we don't, yeah. we don't see, see them seeing it. Right. And solving it. Right. Which right. is what the satisfying version is. Right. Yeah. Right. And we don't get that. Yeah. It's just them solving it and then telling us how they solved it. Right. It's just more <laughs> like how do we how do how do we solve this action? Like that's it. Yep. Shoot yeah. and so they you know double shoot him at the Do you know, the, do you know which one he is? About it. Yeah. Do you have a gun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it is actual like, dialogue but, from but the movie. Between them, it's, I kind of like between them. He's just like, all right, you see it? Yeah, I got it. It's like, no, he needs a gun. Got one. And so he's reaching I. down to his leg and everything. And yeah. we get boot gun again. Yeah. yeah. Second appearance of boot gun. Oh, yeah. Kurt Russell has a gun in his boot. So if he's ever pointing his leg at you, he Look can out. kill you with it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Why are you pointing your leg at me? <laughs> courtesy of Q down in uh, yeah. No, I was just I was just, gonna, I was just stretching. I Put promise. the leg down, man. Leg down. <laughs> that would be that. That's a uh, um, fuck. dark. That's a dark man joke. More specifically, remember the guy's got a machine gun. Yeah. For oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yep. Yeah. 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 Put the leg down. <laughs> Well, is it a surprise? Jack Plans gets shot in the head. <laughs> By both guys shooting both at the guys. same yeah. time. Dead aim. I doubt you can have that good of an aim with a boot gun, but whatever. Uh, yep. right. He's, you know. He's out. He's cash. Mm-hmm. And Terry Hatcher is rescued. Yep. And she's going to moderate between these two guys as their egos are like, I'm the best cop. No, I'm the best cop. Blah, 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 blah. But God damn it, they will work well together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, so, either, way, to, either way, I'm going to date your sister. No, you're not. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> it was like, you should date me. What? What? Yeah. Oh, we did forget what? the scene where uh, where they sm- the way that Kurt Russell escapes from the Oh, my club. God. Yeah, we can't skip over this. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Well, okay. We forgot about that. But then let's come back to this part. Okay. The way this movie ends. We'll come back to it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But again, the club, they got to find their way out because cops have invaded this club looking for Kurt Russell at this point. And he's in the dressing room with all the ladies. Mm-hmm. Um, and they got to figure out a way out. And so, you know, there's... I like the, that, he, I like his line where he's like, ordinarily, this is exactly where I'd want to be, but we need right. to get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That was a good line. But yeah, he needs a disguise to escape. So what does he do? First, he sends out a decoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He sends out uh, Terry, Hatcher. Terry Hatcher in a uh, biker outfit, helmet, and everything. She's smoking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, but she's got the helmet and everything. It's, it's, it's just a weird <laughs> I know, thing. It's yeah. lit. Yeah. She doesn't have to so light it. She has yeah. been smoking that cigarette, yeah. but yeah. she walks out with the helmet. But she gets to whip her hair out of the she helmet. Does. And, yeah, she take does. a drag. And she hops on her bike and she's like, "Hey, well, I don't know what he called mm-hmm. what she called him, but." Lynn? but Something like yeah. that, yeah. But then out we get the oh the reveal. The Harlem Nocturne kicks in. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and then two two stilettoed fishnetted yeah. legs walk out into a doorway. He's, he's and got get, some good gams. Mm -hmm. He's an attractive he's man. Got, mm -hmm. He really is. And we get the look up from the bottom up, and it's a reveal of Kurt Russell and Drag. Yeah. How do you feel about Kurt Russell and Drag? I mean, it reminded me of I, how much I love the movie Too Wong Fu. I was like, it reminded so me. So I was like, yeah. 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 So I was like, yeah. and then I was like, that damn. Was Patrick Swayze. Yeah, yeah I know, okay. but I was, yeah. but I was like, right. damn. We That's why had... I didn't take the movies. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I was like, I that was after this. I know it was a joke, but it's, okay. but, but then it made me think we could have had Kurt Russell in Too Wong Fu, and how fun would that have been? You know, well, there you yeah. go. Yeah. yeah, but I like that they're they're looking for Kurt Russell, so they stop. You know, Terry Hatcher, who's a much slighter build, yeah, yeah, and totally frisk her down. And she's right. like, you know, whatever. And then she's like, summons, you know, uh, mm -hmm. quote unquote Lynn, mm -hmm. and they don't bat an eye, really. <laughs> it's just, it's just like, the top hits like, on her. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like, how how exactly does this is, whatever. It's right. a cartoon. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. This, this, is, this is some Bugs, Bugs Bunny, Bunny shit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? It is. And it's, <laughs> it's truly based on the fact that all these cops, I don't think, have any idea who the guy they're looking for, what he looks like. No. No, clearly. No. Uh, Which, if that's the case, then he wouldn't even need a disguise. He could mm -hmm. just walk right yeah. out if they don't know what he looks like. On a certain like. level, they, they probably just got, he's got long hair, yeah. uh, 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 a chiseled face. and mm -hmm. yeah. He's in the papers like every week. Right. He's the oh, second most they, famous yeah, cop they should in know. Los I was Angeles. Say, if he, he's the famous Los right. Angeles cop. They should <laughs> they know who he is. They should know. But again, this yeah. is, this is uh, Bugs Bunny. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, that's very right. true. So, uh, in the ending, then. the ending mm -hmm. of this again, we get the bickering of, of yeah. the. the uh, I'm about, gonna date uh, your sister. No, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you end the last action buddy action movie of the '80s? I mean, I I hope with a high five. I hope with yeah. a high five. <laughs> <laughs> Can we fucking get it. I hope yeah. with a class. A class. Hand a, not not just a high five. Hand holding. Hand holding. Hand holding. <laughs> Freeze yes. frame. Yeah. Freeze frame. Pull out. Dramatic. Yeah. Newspaper yeah. headline. The happiest gay cops in LA yeah. are back together again and on the streets. Yeah. Hero cops to reunite. You. Yeah. Yeah. Newest, hottest couple, maybe. <laughs> Making their debut as a couple for the first time. Is um, there a. Is, Tango and Cat. Is there a subgenre of film that has ended as well as this buddy cop? Like, this is a perfect way know, to, yeah, to how end the genre, how do you end right? The 80s buddy cop. Yeah. A fucking freeze frame high five. Yeah, yeah. and this is the last one, so perfect ending. Kind of, you know. Yeah. But how do you wow. feel about the rest of the movie? <laughs> well, well I guess out. we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> but before you find out what we thought of it, uh, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Who can we buddy cop him with? Himself. He's like a Jekyll and Hyde situation. You think so? Yeah. Just, yeah. But, but there's got to be another, like, monsterish, no offense, Igor, another monsterish being of his stature that we could pair him up with where they go out and do, like, Groot. What? I don't know. I think he just would absorb him. And yeah. yeah. It would just make him more yeah. powerful. Yeah. And, and I don't sure. imagine him doing much action, more noir. <laughs> yeah. I see Igor with, a, with, a, yeah, with he a fedora smoking in a corner. He doesn't like, run. He slinks. Yeah. yeah. He'd be good in the dark alley. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go for it, Igor. Um, well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Freak Show. Or X. At Sad Freak Show. Or by email. Sad Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on threads and Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about the 600th episode of the Saturday Night Freak <gasps> oh. Show. Longtime listener Dom Cree writes in and says, Dom. All hail the Saturday Night Freak Show. 600 episodes is crazy mm -hmm. like a Jamie yes. Foxx. Never go <laughs> away. We love you. Well, everyone except for Sean. Yeah. F you, bro. <laughs> joking. Uh, thanks for all the great laughs. You guys don't know how much you help people get through the shitty times by being welcoming, familiar voices. Congratulations to the crew. Aww. Oh, Thanks, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dom. <laughs> Thank you for being there for uh, all of them, you old yeah. bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, about tonight's movie, Tango and Cash, Millitime writes in and says, it's one of the best buddy cop movies ever. 
Yes. Ever? Yes. <laughs> Michael Whitaker says this may have been my introduction to cheesy buddy action movies of the 80s and Not 90s. Bad. Surprisingly, bad. I only saw it once, yet jokes about how terrible this movie is reverberated throughout my childhood, either from my dad, who apparently wasn't a fan, or just other movies and TV shows. It was a punchline for many years. Damn. That's I don't remember we'll get, those. We'll get but, into that. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll say, yeah I, some people, I mean, some people regarded it that way, but maybe it was based on all the behind the scenes yeah. bullshit that they hear it, about. It depends on what you want from a movie. True. Mm -hmm. Joshua Owen says, I love this movie. Mm -hmm. My cousin and I used to watch it all the time at my grandparents' house. This one and Demolition Man were on a solid repeat. Yeah, for Great sure. suggestion. I look forward to the review. Also, the Tesla Cybertruck looks an awful lot like the truck <laughs> at the end of this movie. <laughs> that, Maybe this really was the inspiration. Does. If they did a sequel, that would be the truck. It would. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. Gatling guns on the mm -hmm. side. Yeah. And Elon would love it. That fucker. <laughs> Nelson yeah, Nascimento do says, yeah, do <laughs> upon re-review, yes, I think I still love this movie. There you go. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and Travis Legler says, Sean demanded a re-review. Well, this is awesome. Think of what the fans can out demand for Listener Choice Month. This rocks Friday the 13th, Part 7 in Maximum Overdrive. Have a chance. <laughs> I love that our See, audience... See, the bylaws, Sean. You've opened oh, the floodgates. The, okay, well, that's what I wanted to put out there. The bylaws work for us. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put that out there. I love that you that you yeah. keep putting it out there and pushing it as an option. I love that. Keep doing it. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. Mm -hmm. Simon Carter says, I always... oh." Uh, we posted some photos from the movie that, that were saying that real Jason is in it mm -hmm. right. as a hallucination. Oh, yeah. Simon Carter says, I always figured the scene was kind of a tell, the hallucination of the continuity correct Jason, mm. while the killer in part five isn't. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is why they hold so long for your, the reveal in that movie. Right. Yeah, yeah. I right. think is why. Uh, Chili Morrison said uh, Corey Feldman in this movie looked like baby Dwight Schrute. <laughs> he uh, does. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Travis Legler's uh, correcting our math. Uh, when I said like, how many Friday the 13th movies have we done? We've done five. We have did uh, part three, part five, part six, part eight, and we did seven on our drive-in episode. It's a hidden review did, that you have to go looking for. We did three? Oh, we did three and three D. Part three and three D. Right. Yeah. Uh, James Boyce says, while this is clearly not the best Friday the 13th, it's way up there as one of the most fun ones to watch. It's also funny and bad and coked up and stupid and sweaty and has so many wild <laughs> yeah. swings and strange misses. Does anyone else read the 50s greaser as queer coded? This is the Rob Halford era of leather daddies and their dialogue huh. has a certain huh. bickering quality to it. Is that when you didn't mention the, the Rob Hal we talked about this before. You mentioned like the Rob Halford that. part. That <laughs> plays in it. Okay. I like that makes this sense. theory. I like it. I like it. So yeah. wait, are they saying when they're 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 heavy metal fans? They're on a way to a to a Judas Priest concert? I think he just went straight to their gay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh Nick Siebel says uh, Friday the 13th Part 5, a.k.a. Scooby-Doo meets Jason, <laughs> featuring a young Kevin Hart, laugh out loud, definitely will have to rewatch, but other than the nude scene, it's a pretty forgettable Friday film. Part 4 is The Goat, Part 2, 6, and 7 are also awesome. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the nude scene. The nude scene. Yep. The young Kevin 16 Hart in got me. <laughs> when you look at Reggie, you're just like, yeah, Reggie yeah, yeah. Yeah. looks like Kevin Hart. Yeah, yeah. He got it. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, the week before, we watched Happy Birthday to Me. Peter Gatt says, I rewatched this yesterday, and it was really hard to engage with this one. In my opinion, it was too complex for its own good. I think that's what we said. Oh, yeah, it was, I mean, for sure. I mean, we got sure. to the point where we're just like, uh, part too much to part six. Like, you know. Just um, Happy Birthday to, to Me. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I was yeah. on the wrong one. Yeah. Yeah, we had to do a lot of. We had to do a lot of. Remember, there was like three reveals yeah. in the past the last five minutes. Yeah, guessing. Yeah. So there might be some spoilers in the next three comments. Okay. If you, uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, Mark Harrison says, "I've heard the reason Amelia, the character of Amelia, was found in the rain in a catatonic state at the end of the movie was because they ran out of time and money to film her death scene." That makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> And so just oh like, we can't God. kill you, but stand here yep. like you saw some shit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, my God. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. Um, and okay. The they would have been better off just, like, not bringing her up again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
She could have just escaped. I know. Uh, yeah, we just cut, just cut it she out because yeah. yeah. we would have forgotten about yeah, it. Yeah, anyway. we wouldn't have cared. So. Uh, David Green says it's an amazing mask the killer wore. Not only did it make her face look exactly like the other girls, but it somehow even <laughs> changed her teeth and eye color too. <laughs> amazing, right? Because she had a very different mouthful yeah. of teeth. Yeah. Yeah. You're very correct. <laughs> and the Half Price Horror <laughs> Podcast says it's such Ooh. an obvious influence on Scream. I'm surprised it doesn't get talked about more often. Do you see that? Ooh, all right. In what way? Re- right in for next week. How do you, what is the comparison to Scream? I mean, I can kind of see it. New Scream or old Scream? I'm I can see scream. New Scream, maybe. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean, right aside from that, week. it's from, you know, it's one of the. Let us know. Yeah. Yeah. I can kind of see it, but I, I would like to hear your thoughts on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know your thoughts. Yeah. I'd like to know. All right. Well, thank you all for writing in. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Yes, very thanks. much. Appreciate it. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of Tango and Cash the Rewatch, starting with Michaela. <laughs> you're going to go first. All right. What do you think? It's only I right. mean, it's episode 600. Wow. Uh, 600. Feels yeah. like it took us forever to hit 300, and then ever since 300, it's like it's going. It's a freight yeah. train. Just, yeah, it's the money train. Because time stopped. It, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, I. No, one of them was ghosts that I picked. One of them was mm-hmm. vampires kiss. Um, that was four hundred, and that was five hundred. Yep. You had three hundred with fucking people under the stairs. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad that someone else finally got to pick for this one, and that mm-hmm. the math worked out that way. Uh, so who gets six sixty six? I know that's gonna be, that's <laughs> the one we're all gonna there we're we gonna go. have a say. On. <laughs> yeah, <Ooh. laughs> bring back the that's, Manitou again. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's the next one I'm looking forward to. Um, but. Yeah, I came to this movie late in life, um, and I loved it. Uh, I I never late in life. How old are you? I mean, <laughs> like, I was, I was like I was like in my mid twenties when I watched it for the first time. But um, I yeah, it's I trying to think of like how I received it because I feel like I'd heard so many podcasts talk about how bad it was before yeah. I watched it that when I watched it, I was like, this isn't bad. This is just like cheesy. Like, but this, it's commonly made, and like it. I mean, the story has problems and stuff, but like. It is a big budget movie that is entertaining. I'm not asking that much of it. So I kind of thought a lot of the criticism was harsh because like it's not the worst movie I've ever seen by a long shot. At least it's entertaining. It's not boring. And the so, charm will get you a long way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Like and I mean, aren't eighties movies eighties action movies just charm and action? Charm and, and that's cheese like and it. And that's the recipe. Charm, cheese, right? and bullets. Action yeah. movies of the nineteen eighties. <laughs> right. So like it's got all the elements I'm looking for. They might not have, you know, come together exactly the way I wanted to, but it's got everything I want. And it's got two of my faves like headlining mm-hmm. together. Like, come on, you can't there's so much to like. There's so much to like. It's so stupid, but that's its charm, mm-hmm. is that it's stupid. And it's not very often you get to see Stallone be straight laced and uptight and deadpan right. and dry. And I think it works really well for him. And I think mm-hmm. you should do it more. Found him very entertaining, very charming in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen it, you really, you really have been missing out cause it's delightful. And that's just, I didn't even talk about the Jack Palance, like part of it. And that is a huge part of this movie. <laughs> yeah. That's just needs to be seen to be believed. He's so it up. yeah. It's a special place in our hearts down here. Yeah. Really this does. almost feels like an honorary Canon movie, right? Like yeah. this feels oh, like uh, yeah. it sure. should be. Yeah. yeah. It feels like it has the tone and vibe and craziness of a Canon movie, but yeah, yeah. with more money, right. Yep. And For more sure. stars because it has more money, yep. but yeah, if this was a canon movie, you would only have Stallone, and that would he'd be the only recognizable person. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, oh, I gotta recommend it. It's it's classic. It's it's one of my favorite '80s action movies. Period. So mm-hmm. I love it. Holly, what'd you think? Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I watched this many times as a kid, um, but it had been a long time. So you know, you're always a wonder if going into something if it's gonna hold up or you just have that nostalgia feel. But honestly, it's still so much fun. Like I said earlier, it's it's what you look for in a movie. These pe- people that hate this movie, they're not going to watch a cheesy movie and enjoy it. That's just how it is. They're going to review a movie and take it very seriously. And they're looking for very specific things that we don't necessarily look for on this show. We watch movies like this. We fucking love movies like this. It's cheesy. It's really stupid, but it's fun. You know, like we love a good action movie and this is like the quintessential like buddy cop combination like Stallone and Kurt Russell. It's just perfect charisma. And yeah, I love I still love this movie. It's so much fun. It's really stupid, 
but it's a good time. I don't know how anyone could not like <laughs> Tango and Cash. It's so much fun. Um, and also, thank you for 600. Yeah. 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 yeah it's been 600. great. 600. I can't believe we made it. This is amazing. <laughs> wow. We should, we should be dead. Yeah. We After really all should. Be, we should probably be dead. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's a we lot, of, lot of fucking movies to watch. Yeah. We're definitely altered based yeah. on all yep. the movies we've watched yeah. down That's here. That's true. We're not the same. No. <laughs> not at all. We're I've thought of, I've thought about my personal headspace like based on where I was before and yeah. as a person I have changed a lot same <laughs> a lot of it based on the show down here <laughs> they don't call I mean, it the freak show for nothing yeah right no, yeah but thank you all for listening mm -hmm. we love you thank you for going on this journey with us i love the three of you <laughs> so we much love, we, i love you all and i love tango and cash <laughs> <laughs> colin what did you think uh well i didn't listen to the last the last episode sean say he did you I'm, fucking trashed it did i <laughs> I, no yeah, because as you're but, talking, but, as, but you weren't unreasonable about it. Let's say that. Well, as Holly was talking, I was like, I'm like, I think I was that person who was like looking at it as like a movie and trying to review it the last time, and it was maybe a mood or something. Because this time I had a lot more fun with wow. it. I had fun with it when I saw it in the theater, right? But I was probably in my teens or so. I don't remember, you know. And then uh, the last time I saw it. I don't know something about it. You know, you're like sitting there going, "Like this movie is colossally stupid." But Colin, also, it depends movies, on movies are different with this group of people. Well, yeah, she's right because that's what I was going to say. Because I think a lot of it was with the group you were with. Yeah, and the people because around. Because we've you. done we've done movies before that I have like hated watching, and looking back, I'm like, why did I give that a bad review? It was just the headspace mm. and like maybe the group that was here at the time, but it just. It's different with the four of us. It is. I think we uh, allow ourselves, and I'm sorry I'm interrupting yeah, you, but, I, mean, but I think we allow ourselves to like not be as serious about movies down here. Because I will be up my own ass about being serious about a movie and how I take it and not liking things because it wasn't like done the most perfect way. Mm. Mm -hmm. But you, you, sometimes you just got to drop that shit and be like, did, what, what, did you enjoy it? And just like, yeah. okay, yes, I did. Well, yeah. I guess, you know. so it, serious. Some of it, you know, it's like, okay, I get the criticisms about it. I understand why, you know, maybe, you know, if I said I didn't like it the last time, or, or people who didn't, you know, because it, so it is a, on a cartoon logic level. Yeah. But the movie is a very aware of that. It's like playing into that. It is yeah. intentionally trying to do that, right? In the name of, I think we nailed it. It's like, be entertaining and be cool. You know, yeah. and then it has just this combination of very uh, charismatic and likable actors in it. You know, um, I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed it this time. I think going mm -hmm. into it with the like, OK, this thing is, you know, just going to be, you know, uh, well, I guess it's stupid, but it's stupid fun, you yeah. know, because mm -hmm. that was, I guess, the thing I was wondering going into. It's like, OK, a cartoon uh you know, movie kind of uh, the idea there is that somehow it's not sophisticated. It's not an, an, for adults. Right. Right. Adults watch, you know, something that has more, um, you know, substance to it. But sometimes you just want to have fun. <laughs> this yeah. movie is a lot of fun. Um, and so, yeah, I think uh, anybody who likes, you know, action movies and and these guys uh, should watch it. Mm hmm. So, yeah, Tango and Cash, I'm sure Sean also loved the movie, but he Fuck brought it movie. back for a re-review <laughs> yeah. to see it. What did you think? I did, I did indeed. Um, Thank you, Sean. You're, you're all welcome. <laughs> I did this all for you. Like, I could have... Do you know what I could have done? You've inflicted a lot of pain already. Do you know what I could have done? Yes, I, yes, yeah, I was here for nothing but trouble. Scream movies we yeah. have not reviewed? We remember some of your past picks. Yeah, I could... Oh, fuck. I could have brought back... Whatchamacallit? I can't even remember the name. Shocking Dark. No, I got a can't. Shocking Dark No, you, you can't because we were all here for it. God damn it. You can't. That's the bylaw. <laughs> Tonight I'm creating a new bylaw. No. <laughs> Overruled. Okay, that's fine. That's, Thank you. Uh, that is within your right and, uh, you know, majority rules on that. Um, I'm very uh, surprised based on, because I did a lot of reading for this, based on uh, reading about all the problems this movie had that this movie turned out perfectly fine. Like it's everything we all said. It is it is a, a cartoonish action movie from the nineteen eighties, but it is uh it, it's charming. It is uh it's funny in the cheesiest way, but it is funny. We laughed. Um I love the back and forth between Stallone and Kurt Russell. I just like those two actors. Um 
seeing seeing them together is I think great. Um, I mean, Jack Palance has like the big bad guy who's just waiting in the wings, kind of giving his commentary on the whole thing and just being like evil, mm -hmm. general evil as he is in this movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to like about this movie. Again, there's not any. It, it's not saying it, it is. You know, there's no underlying message. There's not. There's none of that shit. It's just a just a fun, charming action movie. Um, the last of the eighties. I think that's all it needs to be. And you know, I had a good time with it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and you know, action delivers. I mean, I guess does. that's the other. That's the bar that yeah. you kind of have to grade an action movie on. Yeah. It's like, but the action in this is like good. You know, yeah. it's like decent. Yeah, good action. I mean, you, uh, you know, cops. What do you want them to be dead serious about the movie? No, you want them to have some fun and you know, mess with the bad guys and put grenades down their pants and yeah. and you know, fuck with them and just just be you know. Uh, uh, sarcastic assholes it's, it's just because it's fun to watch that and the inverse is probably not too great but uh like yeah i had a good time with it and it's just fun to watch um yeah it's i think it maybe gets a bad rap around the way but you know uh i really liked it uh tango and cash thumbs up all right well that means it's freak show approved two rats up <laughs> 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 and that's good <laughs> So, uh, oh, and that means, of course, that the byline state. to watch it. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep you um, have to. It's, in, it's like the, the app countdown movie where if you don't watch it, you die. Yeah. 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 That's so basically what we're getting into. Cash. Yep. Yeah, this is in the iTunes agreement when you listen to the show. Hey, remember when we did that on the show? Countdown? Yeah. We oh, did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We did. <laughs> no one else remembers that. It feels movie, like a long time ago. There was a ago. movie called Countdown. Yeah. 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 I watched it with a kid, which is why I remember it. I don't remember that movie. Um, it was pretty it. boring. <laughs> yeah, it was the ring with the cell phone. I know that. Yeah. 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 Um, next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. 601. 601. What are we doing? I figure we should go to the 60s. Oh. So we're going to watch Blow Up. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like the, 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 the what are we taking? The yeah, the Michael the Antonioni oh, with uh, David yeah. Hemmings. I was just, no, I'm just, because I was just it's reading like a about serious, this movie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, I want to. I, 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 this will is a provoke, Criterion movie. Yeah, it'll provoke. Because I was reactions. looking through Criterion lists yeah. this morning, and I was like, Oh, I remember this. I got to watch this movie. Beautiful. We're gonna watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. It was totally not planned at all. No. It, wasn't. it wasn't planned. You say it like it was. <laughs> yeah, I know. It wasn't. <laughs> no, I'm just happy that you picked this. I'm like, Oh shit, I want to watch this. All right, well, to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> I know nothing besides that little thing. I know not nothing. Blow about out. Movie. No, not, not blow out. Not the Brian De Palma blowout. Which I did look at. It's been on my list it. for a long I time. Like, I yeah. considered that. Yeah. But I went with this. This is okay. up. <laughs> All right. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>